Okay, so the reason we need to have a clock spring is you'll notice that on the steering wheel we've got all these buttons for the volume on the radio, for the cruise control. Of course, we've got a horn button here. And these have to have wires that travel from the, from the steering wheel through the column and to the other parts of the car. Here's an example of a wiring diagram that has a clock spring in it. You'll see this clock spring is in between the horn switch, which is in the steering wheel, and the horn relay. So the wire that goes out to the horn button in the steering wheel must pass through this clock spring. So, to make that possible, we have a clock spring. And to get to the clock spring, you'd undo the airbag, which we've already undone that. You take the airbag off, and then you remove the steering wheel. So there's usually a nut or a bolt in the center. And you, in many cases, you have to use a puller to ca cause the steering wheel to release from the column. You'll have to fish the wires through the steering wheel. And again, we've already undone some of this, so it's loose. You see, here's the clock spring. And this clock spring has the connectors that go to the horn and to all of these buttons in the steering wheel, and it allows it to rotate back and forth so the steering wheel can turn. And then on the back, we have the connectors that would connect to the vehicle. And so the clock spring just allows the rotation of the steering wheel. So here's a clock spring that has been taken out of a vehicle. If you look at it, you can see on the back are the connectors that connect to the vehicle. And on the front, out of the center part, you'll see the pigtail with the wires that come out that would connect to the horn, the uh, airbag, the cruise control buttons, and so forth. And you can see how it can rotate. And we can also take this one apart so we can see how it does rotate without breaking the conductors on the inside. You'll notice that it's connected to a ribbon here, and this is a ribbon of conductors. If you look at it, you can see several conductors or wires that are built into that ribbon. And that's what allows it to rotate. You'll see as it rotates, that ribbon actually slides on itself and coils and winds up. It can rotate quite a ways before it would become tight and break. You can also see how if you did turn it too far, it could overextend the ribbon and break the conductors. Just a word of caution, when you do take these off, you don't want to uh, allow them to become turned and then reinstalled, maybe even a full revolution off like that. Once you install it, then you would turn the steering wheel and it would break the clock spring inside. This particular clock spring um, is broken. And it's broken right here on the end. You see where the end of the ribbon actually came undone from its terminals inside of there. I mean, that's how a clock spring works and that's what it looks like on the inside. Hope that helps you to understand why we use clock springs and how they work.